Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jennifer and I am HIV positive. This is a channel about me living my life with HIV that happened when I was 45, diagnosed at 45. I'm now almost 50 in a month. So this is what it's like living most of your life without HIV and then all of a sudden having to live your life with HIV. Please help reduce HIV stigma and anxiety by liking and sharing my videos. It really does help with the algorithm. In today's video, I am going to share with you the reasons why people won't and don't test for HIV. This is what I've picked up and learned over the last four years of HIV advocacy. There's obviously a myriad of reasons why people might not test and I may not cover them all, but if you hear my reasons out loud, it might help diminish some of the procrastination that some of you experience. So you clicked on this video, either because you always watch my videos, please like and subscribe, thank you. Or you were Googling HIV on the web and my video popped up. Awesome, either way, you're in the right place. Shall we get started? So one of the reasons you won't or don't test for HIV is you simply just never thought of testing. I'm kind of included in that statistic. Although I had tested in 2011, it really wasn't a test I took on a regular basis. Um, I tested with all of my pregnancies, obviously those were negative, and I tested in 2011, I was negative, and I tested in 2016 because I was really, really sick. So between 2011 and 2016, I had not taken a test because I didn't feel that I was somebody at risk, and truly, 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 I wasn't. So high risk, what is high risk? I've talked about this in other videos. High risk is basically male-to-male -male sex, or people who share needles for drugs. And if you are exposed to somebody who has done one of those things, because they may have HIV, if you have sex with them or share needles with them, then you are obviously exposed to HIV as well, which is what happened to me. But in general, if I hadn't been exposed to that person who was a high risk person, my general exposure as a heterosexual woman being with heterosexual men is fairly low risk. Hence the reason I barely ever tested. For many though, it does make sense why they might not test. They might be somebody who's celibate, who just hasn't been with a sexual partner in a very long time. You might be older, like a senior citizen, and you don't think that you'd have an exposure to HIV. Probably you wouldn't, but there's, you know, that little minuscule chance. Or you're somebody who's married, so of course you don't feel like there's gonna be any risk of HIV. Unfortunately, there are people who are exposed to HIV due to their spouses being unfaithful. Obviously, not having sex at all, or not sharing needles for drugs, or having sex with someone who has HIV but is undetectable, you equals you, undetectable equals untransmittable, those are all three reasons why you would not be exposed to HIV. Yes, that's what I just said. If you have sex with somebody with HIV who's undetectable, it is the same thing as not having sex at all. That's the risk. There is no risk, it's zero risk. Okay, so another reason that you might not test or won't test for HIV is that you are straight up embarrassed to go to a facility and ask for an HIV test. For some people, that means going directly to their doctor and asking for an HIV test and having them wonder why you're asking for an HIV test. What have you been up to? Why would you need an HIV test? People also fear going into a facility and asking for an HIV test. I know that here in my area in Santa Cruz, um, if you try to find an ASO, that's an AIDS service organization, on the outside, on their signage, you won't see the word HIV or AIDS anywhere. It's gonna say something else, like the one where I live, it's called Encompass Community Center. From the outside, I'd have no clue that this is where people go and test for HIV. I learned after my diagnosis that that's where people go who live in the area, who are high risk for HIV, get testing every, back in the day it was like every Tuesday and Thursday night. I don't know if that's what they still do, but that's what it was back when I was diagnosed. What I realized is that even the signage won't say it. That's how bad the stigma is. They actually have to keep the name of the place completely not associated with HIV or AIDS um, to make it so people will feel comfortable to come in. Because otherwise, if somebody saw you walking into a place where they test and it said HIV and AIDS on a sign, you're not gonna go there. So they're really careful about that. Um, it's funny because I think it's sad in a way that it has to be completely a different name that has nothing to do with HIV or AIDS, but it's the only way to really get people to go into a facility and be tested where it looks a little bit less obvious. You could also go to Planned Parenthood. You can also do an at-home kit. So you can buy one online and have it mailed to your house depending on your home situation. That might be something that's really easy to do. And sometimes it's not. People are afraid of what healthcare workers will think. They're doctors. And again, even just going into Planned Parenthood, wondering what people will think. And 
it's understandable and people are human and they probably might think something, but who cares? This is your body and you need to just get past that and get tested if you feel that you've been exposed or you feel like you have high risk behavior. You just have to get past it because it's your health and what matters most is your health and you are your own advocate. So you have to just get past that part of what might be going on in someone's head. Really doesn't matter at the end of the day, are they gonna go home and think about you? They're not. So just go in and do it or buy one online. Another reason people don't test or won't test for HIV is just the thought of you taking a test that's called an HIV test. You have now associated yourself, yourself with HIV just by taking the test. So they come together and here's you and here's the test. And now you think somehow you're related to HIV. That is not how it works. And you think there's a really good chance that you're gonna have it now, just because you're taking an HIV test with your name on it that went to the lab. Joe Schmo HIV test goes to the lab. That doesn't mean Joe Schmo has HIV at all. It doesn't mean that that test had HIV in it and his name got mixed with it. And then it goes to the lab and they say, yes, Joe Schmo, you're positive. That is not how it works. So you have to get that out of your head. I know there's a lot of anxiety with people just taking the test with their name, going to a lab, because now all of a sudden you're in the world of HIV testing and you feel that somehow this is the new you. More than likely, it isn't true, especially if you're low risk. Another reason people won't test and don't test is because they are afraid that they cannot afford the medication. People, in most countries, medication is free to no charge. And I think if you're in that country or those countries, you're aware of that. You know that you have covered medical or socialized medication. Um, if you're in the US, no one pays $3,000 out of pocket. This is not a thing. I don't know why everyone thinks that. It's kind of one of the first questions I get. Isn't it really expensive? Well, for me, I have something called Medi-Cal. Talked about this in a lot of my videos. It's free Medicare for low-income families, and it's been that way since my divorce. Um, I'm a mother of three, so it's been that way for, my gosh, 12 years now. All my medication is free. I know it's not free-free. The taxpayers help me with my medical expenses. I pay taxes too, but this is how it's been and this is how it is when you're low income. If you work for a company, you would probably pay a copay. If you pay for your own insurance, you would probably pay a copay and there are coupons and there is the AIDS drug assistance program. They figure out on a sliding scale what you would have to pay. Regardless, there is help. There are always ways to work it. It may not be easy depending on your situation, but there is help out there to make sure that you get that medication as inexpensively as possible. But I will tell you that nobody is paying thousands of dollars a month out of pocket. That is not a thing. Another reason people don't test and won't test for HIV is because you're afraid that it's going to be HIV positive. Here are some statistics for you. I'm talking about here in the United States, not globally. So there are 300 million people living in the United States. One million of them are living with HIV. I'm one of them. So for perspective purposes, I'm going to stick with 300 million instead of 299 million. It's just easier to work with. The most recent CDC statistics show that in 2018, 37,968 people were diagnosed with HIV that year. And that works out to be about 0.012% of the population. That is way under 8%. So let's break that down, that less than 1% even more. Of those 37,968 that were diagnosed in 2018, 69% were gay or bisexual men. So they contracted it from men having sex with men. Or can we be mature here? It's from anal sex, not oral sex. Okay, 24% were from heterosexual sex. That's 9,112 heterosexuals. Male and female are combined in that number. If you go deeper, it says 7% were from injection drug use, both male and female. So let's break down even more right now. The hetero males who always think they have HIV. So far, you've barely seen them in this statistic. Heterosexual men accounted for 8% of new HIV infections, which turns out to be 3,037 males. What this chart fails to explain is that you can identify as a hetero male, but your sexual orientation could also be with men. So you can live a hetero life with your wife, kids, go to church, but you may also have sex with men on the down low. 
and you categorize yourself as a heterosexual male. This chart doesn't have a statistic for down low men. I'm not saying it's not impossible for a woman to transmit it to a man, but as you can see, we are dealing with a number that's almost as close as being struck by lightning. About 270 people a year are struck by lightning. The number of hetero male cases, again, is around 3,000. And you have to account for the down low population that they don't include. So we can argue all day about how low that number actually is, but I can always go back to my experience with Eric and another boyfriend as well as many other HIV positive women that I know who didn't know they had it and never transmitted. Here's a message from a woman that I just wanted to share with you I think is really eye-opening. I was married in 1990. My ex-husband was promiscuous and bisexual. He knew he was positive, never told me. We ended up getting divorced in 1997. He moved back to California. I remarried in 2000 and had my daughter in 2003. In 2012, I ended up in the hospital with pneumonia and diagnosed with AIDS. I was pissed that my ex never told me and I almost died because of it. I was asymptomatic for 20 years. I stayed in the hospital for four months. My CD4, 34, so blessed to say that my husband is negative. My daughter is negative. I'm on medication. CD4s are up to 1600. Like you, sometimes I forget that I'm HIV positive. My point in all this, of course, is that she'd been married for 12 years before she knew she was HIV positive and she did not transmit it to her husband. She also didn't transmit it to her child and what a lot of people don't know is that transmission from mother to child happens during the birthing process, not while the child is growing in the womb. So maybe she had a C-section, maybe she didn't breastfeed. These are all factors which would attribute to why the child did not contract HIV from her. Out of the heterosexuals, 15% are female. Out of the 37,968, that's 6,074, and that's a mix of black, white, and Latina females. The year I was diagnosed, I was one of 1,200 Caucasian women who were diagnosed in the year 2016. 1,200. There's 300 million people living in the US. Think of how rare that is. And the last reason some of you won't test and don't test for HIV is you're just simply, please don't take this the wrong way, you're a special snowflake. You think that you have a dark cloud over you and that everything bad happens to you and you just have this feeling that you're gonna be the unlucky one. I can't tell you how many people write that to me. It's amazing. It's amazing how many people think that they are this unlucky person who is going to have HIV. And can I just tell you that these people that write to me and say this, they're always negative, always. But then when I say that, the next person will come along and say, well, I'm gonna be the one that's positive because all of them were negative, so I'm gonna be the one that's positive. You have to know your risk. Okay, I hope this video was helpful for those who are afraid to test for HIV. If you feel that you've been exposed or you've never tested for HIV, I mean, if you're not having sex at all and you're not using drugs, then. But if you are sexually active, even if you're married, it doesn't hurt to take a test. Try not to let all the other noise get into your ears about why you shouldn't be testing. It's your body at the end of the day, and only you can advocate for yourself. I can't say that enough. Doctors are really busy. It's a business. And just because they say yes for you taking a test, it doesn't mean that you're gonna have HIV. They say yes to everybody because it's a business. They're going to say yes. They're not gonna say no. I'm not ever gonna say no. If somebody asks me if they should test for HIV, I'm always gonna say yes. Okay guys, make sure you like and comment and subscribe to my videos and hit post notifications so you know when I upload. Follow me on Instagram, vongirl24. Gotta go, my kid's calling me. What? Sure. <laughs> That's the end of my video. Wanna say hi? Say thanks for tuning in. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> okay, bye guys.